we attempted to change these hard times. Our own genetic identity became our only true ally to finally survive. So 10 years has gone past since the first No Friends. Um, they've been a huge influence. I looked up to those guys, you know. They were, you know, they were from 
the US and it was like such a big deal, you know, the whole no France the thing. So to be invited on the tours and stuff was insane. I was I used to love it. It was just crazy, you know, like just like just insane premieres, like the after parties were out of control. Some of the stuff that went down was just just nuts. Just partying with the fellas, I was perfect. I loved it. But yeah, these days, uh, like I'm more more into the fitness side of things. I used to always think that I was um that I was always trying to trying to trying to eat good and stuff like that and exercise and stuff but compared to what I do now like I was doing nothing just just sitting around eating big chiefs and going for a run every now and then but um now now I'm just like it's just full on like just nothing but bananas and and water my surfing like I feel like feel like I'm like 17 again you know just um so much more fitter and just so much better in the water not tired everything just a lot better I'm loving it <laughs> Not so much, uh, not so much uh, drinking and um, and partying. You know, I'm a different man. Yeah, that's about it. Not ten years is gone and love it. That's it. <laughs> what do you reckon? No friends, edit, Jeff Hubbard, take one. I kind of remember clearly uh, just having dinner with Ross and my parents back in like 97 or 96 when, you know, Ross first had the idea of like making a really good video. Ross was, you know, telling my parents about it and, you know, we're all talking it up and giving them, you know, all these ideas of what we were planning to do. And this is kind of, it seems just like yesterday. Kind of, kind of, kind of strange how it's gone by so quickly. No friends is pretty, pretty special to me. It's given me a lot of really, really cool memories just to think back on. Looking at the videos, you can just reminds me of all the fun times we've had, hanging out, doing these fun things that you know is, you should be doing when you're young and experiencing life, and just the moments that uh, that pass you by when you're young, and you know to have them all captured on film like that is it's pretty cool. I can still remember, you know, just 
watching uh, he goes, no friends one where Ross just sprays all those people with the with the water in Mexico. And that's just that's just hilarious and laugh. Makes me laugh every time. Oh and how happy everyone was in that car was soaking in some person. <laughs> Mate, makes me smile every time I think of it. all day and guys pushing me to surf the best and I knew you know I had to just come out on top for the world title if I wanted to win today and you know I had Ryan Hardy to surf against this year and he was just like pushing me the, to the limits and 
Guys like Galarami in finals, I don't, <laughs> if I have Galarami in a final, you know you just gotta go nuts. <laughs> so I just went and tried to hit the reef and win. <laughs> so this so psyched. This is the best day ever. I just wanna thank everyone and just, this for, is for Hawaii, this is for America. Ryan Hardy, I'm 27 years old from Margaret River in Western Australia and I'm coming, currently residing on the Gold Coast in Australia. One of the major changes I suppose in going from a small country town to a you know, happening vibrant city is whenever there's, there's no waves, they're just keen to just get loose and have a good time and you know, forget about all the worries in the world and just uh, get pissed really and enjoy the pleasures of the coast. It's, you know, it's one of the more exciting things you can do in your life, is to live it up. <laughs> yeah, probably the biggest change of all of moving from, from Margaret River to the Gold Coast is just the, the change in the surf that, that I'm out in it every day, you know. Like coming from one of the most uh, consistent and, and powerful places in the world for surf to... Um, probably one of the more consistently small and weaker places. Uh, it's just such a, a big change to your everyday surfing. You know, I've grown up and, and developed my big wave skills and faced my, faced my fears and, and make my way up into, into being confident in, in big and heavy surf. And now moving here to the Goldie, I'm facing a new challenge of being able to master small waves. It's a totally different thing where, you know, it's been, I found, especially when I first come here, I was... I was I'm quite frustrated a lot of the time. I'd be out there putting as much uh, effort into my riding on the waves as I was, you know, in the powerful waves at home. Yeah, I feel that that my my riding in small surf is becoming uh, perhaps smoother because I'm, I'm not forcing it so much as I adapt to the uh, the waves with lesser power.
Tahiti, July, last week of July, 2006, will go down in history and probably never leave my memory. Um, sheesh, pretty intense swell. First day of waves it was probably on, um, I think on Thursday. Solid eight to ten foot chopo. The day two of the swell was a bit, a bit bigger. That was the day that, um, you know, required a little bit of extra guts probably to get into some waves. We were all just totally surprised on the events that followed. I mean, you know, biggest, best waves I've ever seen in my life. A lot of them going unridden since you know Laird Hamilton and all those guys were out there on their jet skis, just you know scooping off the best ones. But um, every once in a while, one would sneak through, and sheesh, that West Bowl was just showing its teeth.
one day in particular we pulled up to the end of the road and um, the skies just kind of cleared up. The winds just got perfect and it was amazing. The waves just started turning on and it was just absolutely firing. It was just no one out. It was incredible. I just couldn't, couldn't believe it. And uh, we scored. It was incredible. Got
welcome to the beautiful Hawaiian Islands. Uh, we're cruising in the 88 Ford 4x4 Bronco with 31-inch uh, tires. Picked it up for 60 bucks and a wetsuit. Had a couple major issues with it already. Muffler fell off. Gas tank. It only holds about one gallon of gas. Anything over that, it just starts pouring out of it. It's not cool. We just patched up the radiator. She's running on cool now, as you can see. Before it was running on like way up here. So that, that is a very good thing. Broken down twice. But uh, she's a good rig. I think she's going to pull it off. So we'll see how it goes, I guess. So we're going to shoot pipe, it's pretty big. Looks like it's going to be about 10, 12 foot. And the contest is finishing in about half an hour and hopefully we're going to get some uh, some footage and some photos. Stay tuned, should be good. Yo.
Cheers, it's fire. 